Hi, I'm Matt, and welcome to Tech Tested. On today's episode, we're going to be building ourselves a NAS out of my spare parts. Now you may be asking yourself, what is a NAS? Well, NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. Now what that is, is a computer that is connected to your network that can hold a lot of storage for all of your other devices to connect to. Or to put it more simply, but technically less correct, it is a device that shows up in your computer as a hard drive storage space. Now why would you want a NAS? Well, the reasons vary greatly from person to person, but some of the reasons could be a Plex server, a place to back up your computers, or a place to store all of your important files. Now, in my situation, I'm doing this because my wife has decided she wanted to get into the video editing side of things for this channel. The reason the NAS becomes important in this situation is because a lot of the files we have on this channel are very large. We shoot in 4K. And to store all those files on each of our computers, we would need a lot of storage space. Now we could use something like Dropbox, but unfortunately the download speeds from Dropbox are rather slow and it would be a lot faster for us to use our local network to transfer files from one computer to the other. And since my wife's computer does not allow for a lot of storage devices, it's actually gonna be easier if she can pull straight from the NAS to her computer to work on a single project and then restore those files back onto the NAS when she's finished editing. So as you can see from a workflow standpoint, this is definitely a big upgrade for me and my house. Now let's get on to the parts choice for this build. Keep in mind, all of these are spare parts. I did not purchase anything for this. I will be purchasing some extra storage later, but this was initially done just as a proof of concept. First up is our motherboard. It is a micro ATX AM3 plus motherboard. And while it's not the most efficient platform or most ideal for the situation, Come on, I had it lying around, so that's what we're using. Our CPU of choice is our AMD Phenom 2 955 Black Edition Quad-Core Processor. Now the reason I went with this over a lesser CPU is because it's got four cores and L3 cache, which might be helpful in the data transfer situation. I don't know for sure if that's the case. It's definitely not the most efficient CPU I could have chosen, but that's what I decided to go with. For our RAM, we just have eight gigabytes of DDR3. From what I've read, four gigabytes isn't quite enough, and I had these sticks lying around, so why not throw in eight? Next up is the graphics card, and this choice doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but as a PC enthusiast, I have a really hard time slapping in a low-end graphics card into my system. And while the GTX 460 is by no means a high-end card, it does fill two slots and it does require external power. Dumb decision, I know, but it goes with the theme of the build and it looks decent. So that's what I put in there. It's all being powered by a 550 watt gigabyte power supply and we are using spare hard drives that I had lying around. Again, we will be upgrading the storage with brand new hard drives and larger capacities, but this was just what I had lying around to get things running and to make sure it worked. So that's what we went with. For our five and a quarter inch base, we slapped in a DVD RW drive so I can rip CDs that I have had lying around and have not had the opportunity to put onto a computer at this point. We also have this nifty little drawer that we're gonna be putting in that I'm going to be using to store my flash drives because those things always seem to go missing. I don't know why, they just, they just run away. Now last up is our case. Now typically you want to go with a small form factor case that doesn't have a large footprint. However, I don't have a lot of small form factor cases that have large expansion options for hard drives should I want to add more. So I went with this Antec case that I got from somebody in a trade and it's really cool guys. I just love this case. I mean, if you're gonna have to go with something that's big, it might as well look cool. And we hit the nail on the head with this one. Okay, with our parts list out of the way, let's get into the build montage.
And we're back. The PC turned out looking way better than I ever anticipated. And while the cable management is kind of lacking, it's got a side cover that's gonna cover it up, so it's not a huge issue. And something else you may have noticed, one of the feet on the case is actually missing, so it actually kind of leans a little bit. So I am dubbing this computer the Leaning Tower of Phenom. But now the really nitty gritty stuff starts. I beat my head over the desk for a while trying to get this NAS set up in Windows. Now I'll get into why I chose Windows in a minute, but I got to the point where I was downloading FreeNAS and I was gonna go that route when Kyle from PC Flippin reached out to me and he said, stop, I'll walk you through it and show you how it's done. So big shout out to Kyle from PC Flippin. You really need to go check out his channel. I am highly encouraging him to make a tutorial on how to do this. I don't know how to do this. He walked me straight through the whole process. And once it was all said and done, it worked brilliantly. We got really good transfer speeds between our computers. And keep in mind, this is going from a regular hard disk drive to another regular hard disk drive. But I think our network was our bottleneck. Still, this is way faster than downloading from Dropbox. Now let's get into why I used Windows. A lot of people will probably be saying I should have used FreeNAS or Linux or some other Windows server operating system. And while that probably would have been easier, I'm much more familiar with Windows 10. And with a little bit of practice, I will be able to get this process down pat instead of having to relearn an entirely new operating system. Another reason I went with Windows on the NAS is because I wanna use Steam on the NAS and download all of my games that won't fit on my main rig. That way, if there's a game I want to play on my main rig, I can just click and drag the files, which will be a much faster download speed than trying to get it from the Steam servers. So in conclusion, there are many reasons to build a NAS. And if you have the spare parts lying around and a good case use for the NAS, there doesn't really seem to be a good reason not to do it. For me, this is going to greatly improve my workflow and allow me and the wife to work on editing videos without having to upgrade our systems to have a much higher capacity and so we don't have to have redundant storage for these files. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on all of our social media platforms, and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech tested merch. Pretty much it. I have an ass now. I'm really excited.